This is a Arduino microcontroller and it's open source hardware. When people hear open source hardware they think right away, what? Open source hardware? What is it? Was it free? No, of course the hardware is not free. What that means is the framework for the controller, the design of it, and the software that controls it and the software programs that let you program are open source. Yes, they are free to download and they're free to use, but they do fall under the, the GNU General Public license. This board here from Arduino costs about 30 bucks online, and it is used to control devices you plug into it. First on the board, you see here, this is the chip. This is the main guy right here. This is actually only about $4 in value. It's an AT Mega 328. It runs around 16 to 20 megahertz, and this particular chip handles 32K on its EEPROM memory. The chip, the board, also has this USB connector right here. This is how you connect to your PC when you program it. It also takes power when it's connected from the, to the USB. Here's the real power supply. This board does not have to be connected to your PC to, to run. You plug in power here and whatever you program it, it will start running. The whole board can take between 6 and 12 and 20 volts. Typically, they say you're only supposed to connect around 7 to 12 volts, which means most people will connect a 9 volt DC power supply to this pin right, to this plug right here. Uh, you can also connect a 9 volt battery, it's very common too. The board has a few main pieces that are important to look at and there's a bank of pins here and across the top. This first bank of pins here is this our power supplies. When you connect this to other components, these are your power supplies. There's pins for 5 volt, 3.3 volts, and a pin for whatever power you connected it to. The next set of pins here is for analog input. When you connect a sensor, say a temperature sensor or a light sensor, this will read the values coming from that sensor. Over here, this is digital I.O. pins, input and output. And there's a bank of 13 different pins, 14 different pins, in the ground. So that's one piece of the puzzle. The next thing is, how do we program this controller? Well, that's with the software. That is open source, it comes free from the internet, and this is the environment. The open source environment here is a program written in C, but it's, it's real simple. It's if you can make a web page with and done a little website with JavaScript, you can totally handle this. Every program, which they actually call a sketch, is starts off with two main functions the setup function here and the loop function setup function runs once when the power hits the chip and it's going to run these and use it to initialize some settings the loop that's the main program loop and this will run forever in a loop until you shut the power off to the board so let's do a little example and create a flashing blinking LED light the flashing blinking light is the equivalent of a hello world program. So, we got a little test board here. And I got an LED light. We're going to make a circuit with this light to the board. You see I already have a resistor plugged into the board. I'm going to take my LED and I'm also going to plug it in here. Just like so. So now we got a LED light in series with the resistor. And we're going to connect this to the board. Here's my ground. And now I'm going to connect the positive end. And I'm sticking that in pin 10. So, see, nothing happens because there's no power connected at the moment. Okay, now we're going to connect the board to my USB. And so the machine can't read it. Okay, 
Now there's power going to the board, and you see right here there's a little power LED on the board itself. So we know the board has power, but nothing's happening to the LED. That's because we haven't sent the program there to tell it to do something with that LED. So let's go back over here to the program and write this code. The first line here you see there is a parameter being set and that's just telling us what p pin is connected to what number on the board. Remember I said we did it in pin 10? Well let's make that a 10. Down here in the setup section, remember this runs just once, this is telling the code that pin 10 is a digital pin, it will be used for output only. Down in here is our main loop. And here we're going to write to pin 10 and we're going to turn it a value to high, which is basically on. The LED is going to turn on. The next, fun the next function here is delay 1000, that's 1000 milliseconds, so basically the loop is going to just pause for one second. The next statement here is going to set the value to that pin now to low, which is off, and that LED will turn off. And again, we're going to wait another second. Then this is in the loop, and this thing is just going to continue to loop and loop and turn that light on and off. So, when we light that program, we come up to the top here and there's a verify button. This is going to compile it and check our syntax. So we run that, and look down the bottom here, there's this little output window that tells us the status of what happened in our program is fine. Now we're going to connect this and send this code to the board. And just to check, we're going to go to our serial port and make sure it's pointing to the USB. Okay, it's all set. And the button here says upload. And we're going to click on this. And what it's doing, it takes that compiled code and it just sent it to the board. So now this code is running on the chip on our board. We're going to come over here. And there we are. Our little LED is now flashing once every second. That's the most simplest thing you can probably ever do with this chip. The idea is to connect whatever you can dream to this board and control it through the code. Uh, some of the things you can connect to it are buttons, sensors, temperature sensors, light sensors, little speakers. You can connect motors and servos if you want to operate a, a robot, for instance, or open and close your mailbox for whatever reason. Uh, there's pre-made boards that can connect to Ethernet, GPS, Wi-Fi, so you can enable this thing to run off the internet or whatever you can dream of. You can build it and have a lot of fun doing it.